Um, hello and welcome to another No Direct Flight Nairobi conversation. Today I'm joined by Kantarama Gahigiri to speak about ether reality, a reflection about migration and the sense of belonging. Kantarama Gahigiri is a Rwandan Swiss filmmaker holding a master's degree in international relations. As a Fulbright Award recipient, she moved to New York where she spent several years working in the industry, getting practical knowledge on set. She's now developing Tanzanite, a female-centric, eco-conscious eco odyssey that takes place in 2050 Nairobi. Nairobi! With it, Kantarama is an alumna of Realness Residency 2018, of Artists in Residency by Africa Center 2019, of La Fabrique Cinema de l'Institut Francais during the 72nd Cannes Film Festival in 2019, and of Le Moulin Dant uh, Ceci in France. I'm probably mangling all of these things up in 2020. Um, in 2019, invited by 5x5x5, five by five by five, a residency in Switzerland, Kantarama wrote and directed a reality, a short film about migration and the sense of belonging, which we'll be discussing today. The film screened in competition at the Chicago International Film Festival 2020, Clermont Ferrand 2020, and St. Louis Docks 2020. Um, Tapis Rouge, a um, feature film which she co-wrote and co-directed, has been screened and awarded worldwide, including TV Saint Mon, Best Francophone Feature Film, followed by theatrical release in Switzerland and in France in 2017. Her other achievements include experience as a workshop teacher, as Africa Tech Summit Creative Track Curator, and as a TEDx speaker in 2020. 2020 has been quite a year for you, Kantarama, and welcome to our conversation. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. Hi. 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 Um, so to start off talking about the reality, it manages to merge documentary and speculative fiction. And I found that really interesting. So I'm, I'm curious about what inspired this particular take. Well, uh, <clears throat> it started off as a documentary, uh, purely documentary form. Um, and as I was working on it, I was looking for a way to somehow embody what people were talking about and um, also give us, make us feel because in, I discovered that what we understand most as humans is emotions. So that is essentially what is connecting us together. And I was trying to find a way to tell the story that would best represent its ungraspable sense. And, um, and this is how suddenly I understood that I could, um, I could use fiction, I could use hybrid form. And this is when we started exploring uh, this option as well. But I must tell you that in the beginning, I was really scared because I had no idea if the two elements would merge together and how they would click. But I think it, um, we found a way. Yeah, I think it works. Yeah, it really does. And I mean, I, it, it was quite a fresh take on, on, on the form. So I really enjoyed that. And you've spoken a little bit about this, but maybe if you could speak to us at some length about the process of making um, this particular short documentary. Yes, sure. Um, well, as you mentioned just before, um, I was invited in a residency uh, called 5 by 5 by 5 the, It's a conceptual residency. They invite five filmmakers. Uh, we each have five weeks to make five different short films. And this year was dedicated to the African continent. So there was uh, Hajuj Kuka from Sudan, uh, Yanis Keloufi from Algeria, uh, Samplis Ganou from Burkina Faso, and Nomanzi Palessa uh, from South Africa. I was representing Rwanda. We got all invited in the same place in Winterthur in Switzerland and given five weeks to do something with the team. The team was to come to stay to leave. And uh, so we arrived there terrified because uh, none of us had been there. We had only five weeks and then we had a screening of our work. And uh, we had to, I don't know, we, I think we had like two days to find a subject and then we started shooting. So it was uh, quite stressful, uh, but also 
really, I think under pressure, you can perform maybe <laughs> at your 200% sometimes. So we were all energized and um, going around town and trying to find all these, uh, all these uh, different topics about the town. And I had this grand idea I wanted to do and I found nothing, nothing of this idea. But every time I was going back to uh, this shop, Osina shop that you see in the film, and I was having a really hearty meal or I was sharing a beer and, and discussing with the customers there and or buying just a product. And then I, after a while I thought, but I think the film is here. I think this is the heart of what is bringing me to this town. So I started discussing a little bit more with the people and then I found those characters that you see in the film. And I had to let go of the idea that oh, I wanted to construct something like this, like this, like that. I had to just embrace the fact that this place was the story. So that's how uh, we started. That's actually a thing I, I, I was curious about as I was watching it, I was like, how did how 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 was the how was this group of people found and it sounds so organic you know it's like these people are here they have an interesting story and we will tell that story. Um, so your previous work Tapi Rouge manages to also have a mix of fiction and reality and I'm curious if this is something you you keep going back to and why like is is this the form you have decided to take your the direction you decide to take your work in um not always but it's true actually uh you're pointing it out and i had never thought about that before it's very particular uh however let me mention something about tapis rouge we had a very very beautiful screening in nairobi in uh, 2017 it was one of my favorite screenings of the film uh, the, it was at uh, Alliance uh, and uh, the, the room was full and people were laughing and really enjoying the film and we had a great Q&A afterwards. So I really have the best memories of that. Um, why is this also a hybrid form? I think because, well, the topic calls it. We also like worked with a group of uh, guys from Lausanne and we also started from a real situation, but maybe because uh, I, I need some fiction in my life, in my own life, or maybe because I cannot stick to a certain reality that I, I, I start like adding layers and layers of meaning, but um, it, just, it just comes up naturally that with Tapis Rouge, we started writing stories for the particular uh, characters that we met and in collaboration with everyone, because there's a lot of improvisation, in, for instance, for the dialogues. Um, <clears throat> in collaboration with everyone, we, we, we really embraced the story and pushed it as far as we could. So this is how we end up in a, in a fictional world, yeah but maybe this is where I like to be. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does very interesting work because I mean, like I, there are some things about, there are some um, expectations of form we have when we come to certain stories and it's nice for those, those expectations to be subverted. It, it gives the viewer some work to do, you know, like to sift through the ideas which you, you thought you already had coming into the watching, so. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think maybe there's a freedom uh, in form that we can uh, explore and maybe by merging different uh, formats or, dif or different uh, narrative styles or you can, uh, you can address a topic in a new light or you can also um, be just like highlight certain elements and this is also what I like to play with sometimes, yeah. So um, in Ethereality, the idea of home is really complicated in the narratives of the documentary's characters and home itself feels like a character, like, you know, if you're going to list the credits, it'll be like home, whatever home means. And I'm interested in the ways in which film can tell 
full stories, you know, like 360 degree stories about diasporic identities. So maybe talk to us about that. Yeah. Um, concept of home is, is complex. Um, I think it's very different for everyone. I think we are dealing in these, I mean, these decade, this past decade with a lot of displaced people again in history. Uh, I think um, what and how are we relating to each other and how are we relating to the place where we're from? This is really questioning that has been in my mind. Also, probably from my own experience because I am from two places and at some point growing up, I had to define who I was and everybody's always trying to attach a place to you. And is it the right way to define someone? So these are all questions that I went through and by meeting this particular group of people um, in Winterthur, they were all displaced, yet it's not a recent displacement. They have all 10 years or more experience in a new place. And this is what, what was striking me, that they were not freshly arrived. So I was really curious to see how how they were able to recreate a home? Is it possible to recreate a home? What were they thinking of their old homes? So yeah, this whole concept of one planet, are we able to move around? What are the, what are the boundaries and what are we leaving behind when we, when we leave? This, this was really um, preoccupi preoccupating me a lot, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, which is actually part of the great work the the, um, the fictional element of, of the film does is really highlight this idea of home and coming back home and having some distance and time from the last time you were home. Like when I said watching it, I was like, okay, this is SF, this is SF, this is not SF, you know, but, um, <laughs> but it was really beautiful how he tackled this idea of home. And related to, to my previous question, so... I, I don't need to tell you this. I think the world, as you're saying, like the world has been convulsing with like migration as a massive issue. So it's, you know, the sort of thing that's been a hot button political issue, a social issue and so on. But your film, as you're saying, manages... Uh, Part of it, of course, has to do with the fact that these are not people who are who are recently arrived in this place. But either way, it manages to tackle migration with a lot of care and sensitivity. And I'm really interested in in how you, as a filmmaker, went about you know tackling this really difficult topic, the sort of thing that can cause a lot of conflict with with that much care and sensitivity. So, how did you execute that? Um. Well, thank you. Thank you for saying this. Um, first of all, I think that the astronaut is an embodiment of the feeling of uh, not being part of the env environment in, in the film. You can, you can watch this person evolve in plain sight, wearing a white, very visible costume, yet people won't see this person. And the astronaut is unable to break free from the costume. So this is visually a way for me to express the feeling that the people were communicating with me. So I guess that's one way of resolving the way to approach this very difficult and sensitive topic. Um, also, may be related to my own experience because um, I have also been living many, many years uh, in Europe, in Switzerland. So um, I can observe that migration has brought a lot of positive into the society and some people may not be right away aware, but if you look close carefully you can you can see all the positive sides and this is a way for me also to address this by um portraying people that are not just arrived right now freshly arrived with all the challenges and all the problems but you can also see 
that they have been integrated, like they bringing something with them that is um, enhancing the culture, that is bringing more. It's like plus and plus. So this was my way to approach this. Um, it's a very sensitive and very difficult topic. I think uh, our duty as filmmakers is to shine a light and ask questions. We don't necessarily have all the answers, but at least we can address certain topics. Yeah. yeah that's a thing which which we really talked about during this um, round of No Direct Flight Nairobi, this idea of film as provocation you know like it's not necessarily a, a, a source of answers but it's a way to to spark certain conversations or to to give us another angle on a, on a conversation which we are already having so you're right you're right um so i know you've had a festival run with this film maybe talk to us about that and what what insights or what things have come out of your festival run well so um as I said, the film was made in this residency and after the five weeks, we had the premiere in the city uh, where we made it. So while we were making the film, we already had emails about 700, uh, uh, an audience of 700 people that were coming and watching the film and we were still editing and it was, uh, it was a lot of pressure and then Suddenly the day comes and the film premieres at the end of the residency and the people from Winterthur got to see five different portraits of their own city. And it was very emotional because, yeah, they had never, they had never seen this light on their city. So I've had really interesting conversations afterwards with um, some people thanking me for showing them um another another way to think about their city and which is way more diverse than what they thought in the beginning um this was the first one uh after that we have uh unfortunately 2020 was a very difficult year for festivals but we were pushing and um submitted anyway and we've had some uh, beautiful connections um, first Clermont-Ferrand in France, which is, um, I think the second biggest festival uh, in France after Cannes. It was a very, very interesting experience and uh, some very good collaboration is coming out of this, um, which we'll be able to announce very soon, I guess. Uh, it's been a bit pushed back due to Corona, but hopefully in January, um, we can uh, announce something about um, that started in Clermont-Ferrand with this film. And uh, after that, uh, the honor to screen um, in Chicago Film Festival uh, in very good company with um, um, top-notch films and, and, and great artists. Um, that was a very beautiful experience. Um, Q and A's at 1 a.m. because <laughs> of the time difference but um no that was uh, that was very special i have also to mention brazil because uh we've screened four times in brazil now i think we screen everywhere and very um graciously won uh, a prize in the rastro film festival and we also recently won a prize in chile in um, arica nativa film festival and i'm most most happy to be able to to screen on the African continent. So we've had um, screenings in um, Madagascar and, uh, and um, we are going to have a screening in, in Senegal uh, in one week and then also uh, Nairobi, no direct flight, which is really, really great. I'm, I'm so happy that this could happen. Um, so yeah, it's going, it's going step by step. This year is not the festival year. It's not easy, but we're still there. So yeah. I'm happy also that this is a film that gets to be shown on the African continent because um, it's so often our stories are sort of exported to, to the West. And this is like one of those stories that's about the West, but also about Africa because we see a lot of African people in the, in the film. So yeah. Um, 
this that sounds great actually um, this was actually very important to me when we discussed with the producer about uh, what would be the distribution strategy uh, we really made a point in also showing it on the ground in Africa and um, uh, Nairobi is the beginning there will be, there will be more more screenings hopefully when the situation allows it but uh, We've been submitting to other festivals and it's very important to me to show my work where I'm from as well. And especially because it's dealing with these topics of immigration and then movement and everything. And already with Tapir Rouge, huh, we were very fortunate to screen in Nairobi, but we also screened in uh, Tanzania. We screened in Rwanda, of course. Uh, it opened the Mashari Kifin Festival. It was a beautiful experience. So yeah, I'm really like, it, for me, it's important because this is, this is the roots. This is where I'm coming from. <laughs> so I, I also coming back with um, like the fruits of the journey somehow. So let's expand and talk a little bit about your work. You have quite a large body of work. Um, I watched the series Me Plus You after, after I watched the reality and I was like, this is a really interesting concept and also like really short you know it's the sort of thing where like when you're taking a break you can watch this and then come back and watch another episode which is really beautiful and you know you have you had shots you had a feature length documentary so talk to us about you know your larger body of work and the creative process that informs your body of work yes um it's only recently that i feel that i'm somehow maturing maybe into something or, or, or finding um, my, my preoccupation, my voice. Uh, the, the whole journey has been very interesting. It took me through the US and this is where Me Plus You was shot. Uh, this was very, very beginning of whatever I was doing. And um, yeah, it really portrays something that was happening at that time, I would say, and that is very um, contemporary to, to the US and that worked and was shown in the US, but it's very specific. And I think I'm glad that I was able to move and open up a bit because um, ultimately, ultimately it's about finding your own voice. And I think it took me that long uh, to finally grasp like topics like like for ether reality or for tapis rouge that I'm that I'm that are hitting home more closely. So yeah, it's been quite a journey, and um, and I think it's okay to take like time to to read and then understand what is it really that you want to address. But I'm um, finally feeling a lot more comfortable with what I'm doing at the moment, yeah. And you've touched on this already, but I'm interested in how your experience working in film and TV across three continents um, sort of informs your work and your particular approach to storytelling. Um, I think that you have to take the best, a little bit, a little bit the best everywhere and mix it and do your own cocktail and, and, and do your own sauce, if I can say. Um, <clears throat> there is good and bad uh, in, in the US in terms of filmmaking. Uh, definitely they have a big industry. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way of um, making film that works. They've proven it again and again and again. Um, I'm becoming increasingly more critical already when I was there, but it's increased since um, about what stories they're telling. Um, I think they, uh, they're in need of renewal of, of story, story material and, uh, and uh, moving around and working in other places has given me a perspective um, that is enriching um uh, hope that is yes enriching the the, the work um ultimately i think that we have in africa i mean I, let's say 
where I work because let's try to be more specific. Africa is really big, but I work in, uh, I work in Rwanda, I work in Kenya, I work in Uganda. We have really compelling stories to tell. We have the knowledge of storytelling. We, we, we have all these, these roots and, and beautiful things to say. So I think by mixing this and having a little bit of, I don't know, um, author films approach that I could find in Europe and, 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 and shake, 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 hopefully that it all blends together and creates something that is maybe representing me or, 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 or my journey in life or all my influences. I think nowadays, um, it is important to embrace the fact that um, because we also have internet, we're able to access different places, we're able to access different methods. It's, a, it's, it's our time to embrace the fact that we can have multiple influences and, and take the best out of it and make it our own. So it's been a, a long journey. Why did I go to the US? Because in my mind at that time, I wanted to learn about the craft and I think that was a success. I, I spent eight years on set on the biggest 400 people, uh, huge film sets on the smallest also. I think I learned about the craft, but it ultimately was very good that I left to find what was the roots, what was at the core, what I wanted to talk about. And this is only by coming back to who I am and where I'm from that I was able to find this. So I'm using the three influences for sure and making my own blend. Yeah. Hybridity, I am sensing a theme here. Um, <laughs> um, so earlier this year, it was announced that you're working on Tanzanite, which uh, has been described as a female-centric, eco-conscious odyssey that takes place in 2015 Nairobi. I think in the piece I read in Variety, it said 2045 Nairobi, but I think we're pushing it further into the future. Uh, so <laughs> I... I lived in Nairobi most of my life and I'm, and I'm quite intrigued by this and I'm sure a lot of people watching this who are Nairobians or come from Nairobi or have lived in Nairobi would, would, would like to hear a little bit more, just whatever it is you can share with us at this moment. Well, 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 um, it is very hard to, to talk about some work that is in construction. <laughs> um, what I can say about it is that it's, since it's set in the future, it's mostly, um, I'm, 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 I'm using elements that exist, but it's mostly um, things that are coming out of my imagination again, like I'm, I'm <laughs> maybe I'm not comfortable in the just reality, maybe I have to add a layer, but um, it's really inspired by, by some of very precise elements that I'd like to address. And I'm uh, pushing them in the future to see what could happen. But that being said, um, it's very hard, especially because I've been writing to speak about a work in progress at this stage. Uh, also because uh, it's evolving so much. So um, I have this feeling that once I talk about it, it's like set in stone and, and, I'm, and, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm obliged somehow to address it. So, but um, no, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful project. Uh, hopefully um, uh, it will come through. I, I'm sure it will, but um, the conditions now are a, bit, are a bit tricky, but we will definitely find our, our way to, um, to go through all the challenges and make the film happen. Um, this year has definitely helped me um, make it more about what it means to be a woman and what challenges that we are facing um, daily and how dangerous in fact it is to be a woman and um, 
and uh, how what it takes for us to um, to survive and um, and uh, and yeah, this has definitely been a focus this year. So let's see. But I I don't want to speak a little more more than that about it. It's it's really difficult. <laughs> No, I understand that. And I think a part of it, as I was reading about it, as I was reading some of the press around it, and one of those things that was mentioned was a curfew. And I remember thinking, we are already, we are already in this future. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because Nairobi, Kenya, like a, a number of other countries has imposed curfews around, around the virus and so on. And so we found ourselves in this unique situation where some things which we were projecting into, into the future, like in the future, there'll be contagious or oh, there'll be this or there'll be that and we're like well I guess we are living in the future you know um a future we've only been imagining so I get that also like how do you speak about something that in some sense is, is already happening but in some sense is in the making but uh thanks for sharing that with us are you working on anything else at the moment or are you sort of like um I know you said you've been doing a, a lot of a lot of writing so uh, is there is there a project you can talk to us about well, this Tanzanite has been my main focus this year. Um, this is really what I've been busy with. There's always, always little other things. Um, I'm also curating sometimes for uh, for festivals or uh, for um, Africa Tech Summit. Um, but as you know, this year has been quite difficult for gatherings. And then, so this has been put a bit of on, on hold. Um, I've had some ideas um, after Tanzanite, and then this is exclusive, but <laughs> um, I've had some ideas to um, further develop this exploration of the future and address other topics. So if all goes well, Tanzanite won't be the last one that we're making in this region. and. Um, yeah, there's so many things to say and tell, but um, it's very early on, so it's hard to it's hard to explain, it's hard to talk about. It's easier. It's so much easier to talk about what is, has been done. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Maybe um, I don't, maybe, maybe I just don't want to curse it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, please don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, usually the way we, we wrap this up is by asking what we should expect from you. And I don't just mean projects, I mean like in terms of big things. If, if, we, if we are thinking about what Kantarama is up to in a year's time or in five years time, is there anything, is there anything you'd like to explore that you, that, you know, we, we can expect from you um, going forward? Yeah, I think five years from now, I think I'm really hoping that I'm still making films and that we're still able to make films and 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 and, um, and get our voices out there because um, as I was saying recently, um, artist work and uh, cultural work in general, not just film, but all other uh, disciplines as well, um, is really what makes us human and what is um, connecting us all over the planet, even if we haven't seen or met or, or the, it's a way of, of getting in contact and, and moving someone. And, um, and so for me, it's very important to continue to just put my little stone, my little piece one by one and contribute to that and um yeah hopefully still be making films and uh if i'm not i know that i will find another way to get the voice out there but no um really uh this is what i'm doing all the time i'm so passionate about it i'm sure that in five years i'll still be making uh, we'll have another q a and i'll be talking to you about this next project that i'm obsessed about Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> ah, I love the sound of that because um, I've, I've really enjoyed talking to you and this has been such a good conversation and 
as I said, I really enjoyed the reality. I, 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 I went back to look at, at what work of yours was available. So I, because I was like, this is so good. I want to see more from this person, you know? So um, we're really looking forward to all the work you have um, lined up, but we're especially in this house, and by this house, I mean the Nairobi house, really looking forward to Tanzanite because, yeah, um, it sounds really exciting. It sounds like a really exciting project. So um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for making time to have a chat with us. This was fantastic. And all the very best in all the things you're up to. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a great opportunity to screen uh, there. And uh, um, I was supposed to spend maybe 10 months or more in Kenya this year. And well, plans got a bit different, but I'm hoping to get to Kenya soon. So this is uh, hopefully a way to uh, meet maybe later, have a coffee and discuss in person. And to the audience, thank you very much for uh, watching. It is always a pleasure to share work and, and a great honor. So I'm looking forward to show you more what we, we, what we do in the future. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you.